Alright, in this video we're going to look at decreased pulmonary blood flow defects and cardiovascular dysfunction. And we're going to talk about two. We're going to talk about tetralogy of phthalate and tricuspid atresia. So tetralogy of phthalate is um, marked by four characteristics. So tetra means four, right? So it's marked by right ventricular hypertrophy, ventricular septal defects, pulmonic stenosis, and overriding aorta. So think about in those, um, in those anatomical descriptions what um, this child might have in their clinical manifestations. So, they, so you can see um, the mixing um, of uh, deoxygenated and oxygenated blood. So if deoxygenated blood is going through um, the aorta, then that child's going to have be cyanotic and have hypoxia. Um, so patients at risk for emboli, loss of consciousness, um, sudden death. Uh, so think about that in relation to what those particular um, anatomical defects can cause. In tricuspid atresia, so there is no communication between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So as you can see, the um, blood flow is um, entering the right ventricle from the left ventricle. Uh, so you have all this um, oxygenated blood. Um, cyanosis may be seen in the newborn period. Um, Pulmonary blood flow is usually di uh, uh, excuse me, diminished. Um, older ch children might have signs of chronic um, hypoxemia with clubbing. Um, if uh, the palliative treatment and help would be um, the shunt and surgical uh, treatment um, with the inferior vena cava and a shunt um, from that to the pulmonary artery. Um, surgical mortality following this is a less than 3%, so there's good um, prognosis um, if treated uh, quickly. Okay, that concludes decreased pulmonary blood flow defects. Um, for review and um, all of the pathoclinical manifestations, medical management, you'll want to look in um, chapter 23 of cardiovascular dysfunction, the box um, regarding all the different um, uh, areas and defects.